<laughs> I'm going to call to order this work session. Um, Monroe County Board of Commissioners, it's August 14th, and all three commissioners are present in the Net Youth Hill Room. We have one item on our agenda for the work session, which is Ordinance 2024-33. I don't have my glasses on. And um, this is regarding um, ordinance amendments in response to House Enrolled Act 11 1108. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Um, Ms. Nestor Jellin, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me okay? You're a little right. muffled, but yeah. Okay. I'll try to speak clearly. Uh, so today you are going to review uh, three ordinances that are being impacted in regards to the Enrolled Act 1108. This uh, bill was introduced and passed um, as of July 1st, 2024 this year, it became effective. So we're trying to update our ordinances to comply with this new state statute. The statute itself says that a unit may not adopt or enforce an ordinance or resolution that prohibits or has the effect of prohibiting development exclusively on the basis of slope if the pre-development slope of the site is less than 25%. So just a reminder, this is not applicable to anywhere within the reservoir. This code uh, specifically excludes areas within a watershed or a reservoir drinking water source. So our environmental constraints overlay protection for Lake Monroe and Griffey still stands, which has a slope provision between 12% and 18%, depending on the proximity to those watershed areas. So um, I am bringing forth just a few changes to three chapters. So I'll just start with the first change. This is in regards to chapter 804. We're going to strike the portion on administrative waivers. Since this is going to allow for development up to basically a 24% slope, 24.9% slope by right, we don't feel it would be necessary to have a waiver for 25% or, or, or more slope. So we're just going to go ahead and strike this. And if someone proposes development, say, in a 26% slope, the BZA would have the option to either provide them, uh, grant them a variance or deny the variance. So uh, we're going to get rid of the administrative waiver portion of this section. The next change is in regards to our defined buildable area. Um, this is in two different places in the ordinance. It's in the zoning ordinance and the subdivision control ordinance. So we're going to update this language. Instead of saying slopes 15% or greater, it's going to say slopes 25% or greater as measured as a 25 and a half, or 12 and a half foot fall over a 50 foot distance. And then we've separated out that areas one through three in the environmental constraints overlay have additional slope regulations in, H in chapter 825. So that still protects the watershed from this new change. The next change is under the site plan and plot plan uh, chapter. So this is chapter 815. We're asking that on their plot plan or site plan that they show in addition to a 15% line, they, we'd like them to illustrate a 25% slope line as well. And then at the end, we're going to ask, um, just verify that site plans and plot plans shall comply with Chapter 761, which is the stormwater ordinance, and the stormwater technical standards manual regarding all erosion control measures. So if someone is proposing uh, development in a steep slope area or a uh, protected slope area, the stormwater team can take a look at that development and um, provide guidance for additional erosion control measures to mitigate any potential impacts. And then the last change, similar to the prior change that I showed you, so again, this language is both in the zoning and subdivision control ordinance because these ordinances are both separate. Um, there is going to, again, be the change to separate out the 15% slope to further verify the 25% slope countywide, and then areas one through three in the watershed will have those specific slope regulations. So I'm happy to take any questions. 
right. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens. I, well, my only comment is is that supposedly the rationale for introducing House and Bold Act 1108 was to make cost of land for building less expensive, and there's absolutely no data that would indicate that changing these slope restrictions will impact housing costs mm -hmm. for new building in Monroe County. Yeah. It's going to make it more expensive for the rest of us to deal with the stormwater impacts. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Yeah. yeah, it's it's unfortunate that these changes have to be made. Um, Monroe County does not have the same topography that a whole lot of the state does. And it's too bad that the state legislators don't realize that we have to wrestle with problems that most of them do not. And they've just made this a whole lot worse. Yeah. I agree, um, and um, but I will say that clearly the CDO incorporates these changes, the proposed CDO that we're going to be looking at um, and having hearings on very shortly, um, already incorporates these changes. But this is just a good reminder that the CDO is great and it doesn't have to be perfect because things will happen and we'll have to make uh, amendments and revisions to that document, just like we're making right now to our current um, uh, planning and zoning documents and our current uh, chapters. So um, that's all we're doing with this. So, but it's it's something we we have to do. And I believe that um, the stormwater, the new stormwater um, regulations are so much better um, right now as well. And I think that's that makes me feel better about this too so yeah all right um when do you want to have this on our agenda on the 28th or 28th works 28th of august does that work yeah that would work for us if it works for you yes great sounds good great thank you so much we appreciate you thank you thanks all right thanks all right. Um, anyone else have an item for work session? Okay, great. Uh, with that, uh, we are adjourned. We're back on August 28th. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.